Welcome to First Baptist Church in Gas City, where everyone matters, because we all are made of matter. All right. Today is, regardless, regardless of what goes on in life, who will you serve? Who's the one who gives you reason to get up? Who's the one that gets you excited to be by their side or to proclaim their name to lift up and celebrate? In the midst of everything that's gone on this past week, many people wring their hands and and they don't want this person. They want this person. And some people think that things are going to go to pot if this person's in charge and, and going to pot if this person's in charge. But what do we do? What do we do? When it doesn't go our way. Let's hear what Joshua stated before he took the people of Israel from a wandering people to become a settled people. He says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord your God himself who brought us and our fathers up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our, on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. You realize that when Joshua said, Throw away the gods of your ancestors. Throw away the gods of those who were in Egypt and those across the river. He's talking over 2,000 gods. Little G. 2,000 types of gods the Egyptians worshipped and honored. That's a lot. Imagine if we had a worship service that honored 2,000 gods. Oh my goodness, we'd be here for days, every week. And sometimes an hour is enough just for one God, Big G. 2,000 gods. And these gods represented the sun, water, air, the Nile, death. Do you realize that there was even a God? Get this. A hostess. A hostess for people who died and as they entered into the Never Never Land. There was a hostess, a god, a goddess. Her job was, how many is in your party? Come on in. I mean, imagine that. And you know what her job was? To give water to those who just entered. And there was also a god 
that ferried people over this lake called Lily Lake to get there. See, you talk about job security. There's a God for everything. You know, there's going to be something there. Now, we hear of only the popular ones, you know, the sun god, the air god, the war, goddess of war. Now, the Amorites, they had gods of the mountains. They had a couple. They had many gods also. But there is a god of the mountains, and then there's a god of the hills, a god of water. <coughs> and you notice the theme here? Anything that's important, you slap a god on. And do you realize we have many gods ourselves? We really do. In this world that we exist, we may claim the God, but if we're honest, have you ever heard of the idolatry of family? That family actually can be a God. How many of you ever tried to go against the God of family? and say, I'm going to do something else this holiday. Uh, what? Excuse me? You know this is what we do. This is what our family does. We come together. We get together, and we're going to enjoy each other. Or, God of commerce. We build monuments to our achievements, our financial achievements in this land. You touch my property, then you're going down. We have different gods. God of prestige, God of power, God of good looks. And God's our sideshow. I'm talking God of our scriptures. How often have we said that I'm going to take care of this over here because this is what's important today. When we say our scriptures say, which they do, do not forsake the gathering together. Do not give that up. So that you may be strong and, and develop in your faith. But what do we do? In my experience, over years of being in churches, we have somebody spend the night. Where do they go on Sunday? For some of us, we bring them to church. Others, we say we don't want to bother them, and we say stay. The God of who do we serve? Do we serve the God of heaven or do we serve the God of flesh? We laugh at the 2,000 gods that the Egyptians had. We laugh at the gods of the Amorites, but we don't laugh at our gods. We will get uptight. We will get upset. We will, we will fight. We will say, who are you to tell me that I don't love God. Only you in your relationship with God, only God knows the truth. All anybody can say is, here are the actions, now what are you communicating? That's all anybody can say. Oftentimes I ask, what do you want to communicate with that facial expression? You know, you know, when Becky gets upset with me and she starts looking at me funny and 
I said, what are you, what are you communicating? I know. You're right. <laughs> might not. And sometimes, even myself, you know, I, I had, it, it cracks me up when singing a song that is full of joy, and sometimes I find my own face. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of love. I don't, I don't know. Or, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. You know, what are we attempting to communicate with our actions? Kind of thing. And so, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Now, if we take that face value, fear the Lord. Ooh, Halloween was just a few days ago. Be afraid, or honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. Now, honor the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Fear. Does that make us want to do something with joy? Now, think of this. Let's put mother in there, or father. Now, Fear your father and honor him with all faithfulness. Serve him with all faithfulness. Do you do it out of fear because you don't want to be punished? Or do you do it because this is great? I appreciate this person. I honor this person. I believe it's honor this person. Give honor to whom honor is due. Therefore, throw away the gods. Throw away those, those things that, that take up our time and our energies. Just because our ancestors believed something was important doesn't mean it should be important today. Like Thanksgiving's coming up, and, and Grandma always cut the, the limbs off of the turkey. And so we say, we've got to cut the limbs off the turkey. That's what Grandma always did when we put it in the oven. It's not sacred unless we do those things. When in reality, the reason why she did that is because the oven was just too small. <laughs> and... Do you realize that the gods of Egypt have evolved? Just like our gods have evolved. The ones that had high prominence early in the existence of Egypt eventually got lower building. It depends on what was important to the people at the time. You see, in the turn of the century in 1800s, <clears throat> There wasn't a lot of coal use. There was not a lot of coal being used in the United States. It's primarily wood from the trees to fire the furnaces and so forth. But then when they discovered a new way of smelting iron and turning it into steel, and they got the train to work, and they needed more power, coal became the new god. Whatever, oil became the new god above that one. Whatever is meeting our purposes at the time, that becomes our new god. When we realize that the sun is the, the source of all our energy on this earth, then we start worshiping the sun. Without the sun, Plants don't grow. So that's got to be pretty important. Without water, that's got to be important. The Nile had to be important. And we do the same thing. Whatever is important to us, that becomes our God. At that time, what's important? But, jo but Joshua is saying, and by the way, Joshua means in Greek, Yeshua. And Yeshua and Joshua means 
Savior, one who saves. That's what it is. And Jesus is the Savior. And Jesus' name is Yeshua in Hebrew. So, throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the <coughs> Lord. But if serving, I love this part, because there is no coercion involved. There is no, you better do it, or off with your heads. It's not saying this. He's saying, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Sometimes, and you know when Jesus said, I have come with a sword to divide the son against the father and the daughter against the mother. And what did Jesus also say? If you love family more than you love me, then something's wrong. Jesus says this. Now, he also says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added. And sometimes we get the cart before the horse. And we push all these other things in front of the horse. And we get worn out from them. We get worn out. When in reverse, if we would just allow the horse to lead us, to carry the load of family and all the things that we desire in this life, what does Jesus also say? My yoke is easy, is light, and my burden is easy. Or yeah, bottom line is it's light and it's easy. It's better for us. If we take care of one thing, everything else is going to be taken care of. It's a system. So it doesn't matter what's going on around us in this world <coughs> when we have our eyes on Christ. Because all other things will be cared for. If our family is full of craziness, It'll be worked out. All we're called to do is pray and be kind. Keep on loving the family, but not allowing the family to dictate how you serve God. Does that make sense? God is the one who determines how we act in relationship to God. Not our family. Our family has influence. But when that influence challenges what we understand our purpose is, that's when the division happens. And it's not because you want it. It's just because it's reality. You still love, you still care, you're still kind to them. But if they come to visit you and your, your desire is to worship with the family of God, then they come with you. Because that's what you do in your family. If they choose not to, well, here's five bucks, go to McDonald's and we'll be back in an hour. You either come with us or you go hang out somewhere else. That sounds harsh. But what, what, who, 
Who are you worshiping? Who are you catering to? And just like what happened this past week, are you catering more to an ideology or are you catering to who God is? What matters more? The love of God or the love of an idea that has nothing truly to do with the whole package? Because there is no one idea that captures everything that is right and everything that is good. There's a little bit over here that's good. There's a little bit over here that's good. And if you found, if you just sift them together, you can find the good in both. And there's no need to yell at people and say you're wrong. Because there might be an ounce of gold in there. In everybody. Why do gold miners, in the early days of mining for gold, when they would do the, the pan, they'd pick up some dirt and, and hopefully some minerals in there, and they shake the water through there? Why they spend that kind of effort? Because they have hope. They have hope. And no matter what's going on in the world around us, we always have hope. And we're always willing to allow the water of the Spirit to sift it and see what gold we can find in each other. Isn't that wonderful? Because if you look at me at face value, you just see a chunk of coal. But if you put enough pressure on me, you put enough, enough Time on me, someday I'm going to be priceless. I'm going to be a diamond. Same way with each of us. You're a jewel. I'm a jewel already. Yeah. There's a song that I played for my class, my classes. When we were talking about rocks, it's Simon and Garfunkel's I Am a Rock. And I learned to dance with that song. I am a rock. I am an island. You better not dance. <laughs> okay. I learned to move to music. And, and, <clears throat> And the song starts out like a fallen shroud of snow. Number one, how do you become a rock and, you, and you're like a fallen shroud of snow? You know, mixing your metaphors. And then, and then, the idea, love isn't going to bother him anymore. But you know what? In the rock cycle, you wait enough time, and you're going to become a different kind of rock. I think that was so great. So, if we just give each other enough time, we're going to turn into the kind of rock we need to be. A rock feels no pain, but it's also as good to build up things. Isn't that great? And limestone, when it's worn away, what do we get at the end of the cave? A tunnel, but what flows in the tunnel? Water. And when it comes out, we call it a what? A spring. Yes. Yes. A spring of living water. Isn't that wonderful? So regardless of what goes on, heavy rains, earthquakes, lava, we're going to be okay. Because we believe in hope, and we believe in transformation. We believe in possibilities. Isn't it great? Amen. All right, I'm done. The Lord be with you. Rock on.